Welcome back. We're now starting our new segment on uh, submodular functions and uh, submodular function optimization. In this lecture, we're going to lay out the basic definitions and properties and, uh, and also give a few examples. And then in the next lecture, we're going to talk about the greedy algorithm and, uh, and when, we can, when we can say any guarantees for it. So let's start with the basic definitions. As with matroids, we're always going to have a ground set in mind that is finite. So let's let E denote a finite ground set. And uh, the basic definition says the following. If f is a function from subsets of E, then it's called submodular if the following key property holds. For any two subsets, A and B of E, F of A plus F of B is lower bounded by the value of the union plus the value of the intersection. This is the key property that we're going to be working with. Um, something that's very useful to define is called the marginal value with respect to a particular set. So. I'll just call this the marginal value, but it will be clear from the definition that this depends on, uh, on the particular subset that we choose. So for a subset A of the ground set E, then we denote by F subscript A of I, for I some other element, some element of the ground set that doesn't belong to A, the value of f of a plus i minus f of a. Hence, the marginal value of the element i with respect to the set a. The definition above it for uh, submodular functions is equivalent to uh, several other ways that we can define um, submodular functions. And I'm going to state this here as a, as a theorem of equivalence. So, the following are equivalent. One, f is submodular. In other words, it satisfies the definition that we've uh, that we just gave above. Two, for any two subsets that are nested, a and b, of the ground set, and for any element. that's not in either A or B, the marginal value of I with respect to the set A is greater than or equal to the marginal value of I with respect to any superset B of A. And there's an even more local way of stating this, exactly this property. And basically it says that for any set A and for any set B that's A plus any other element, this property that we just wrote down holds. So in other words, uh, for any set A, that's a subset of E. And for any elements I and J that are in E but not A, then F the marginal value of i with respect to a is greater than or equal to the marginal value of i with respect to the one element larger set a plus j. So uh, clearly 2 implies 3. Um, but in fact, this, this theorem says that, that all of these are equivalent definitions. Well, let's turn now to some, other, uh, some additional definitions and, and also some, some properties. 
So it turns out that uh, a subclass of submodular functions is, is also going to be important to us that we're not going to uh, focus exclusively on this. And this is the class of monotone functions that basically just say that if A is a subset of B, then F of A is less than F of B. So a submodular function F is called monotone. if it satisfies that property that I mentioned. If whenever A is a subset of B, F of A is less than or equal to F of B. It turns out that uh, submodularity is preserved under uh, several operations. I'll write these as lemmas. So first, if alpha and beta are any non-negative scalars and f and g are submodular, then alpha f plus beta g is also submodular. In particular, this implies that if g is linear, then f plus g and f minus g is again going to be uh, is again again going to be submodular because if g is linear, then g and minus g are, uh, are also sub submodular. This is important because f minus g is not necessarily uh, submodular. So I'll just write this. Uh, if f is submodular and g is linear, then f minus g is again submodular. And finally, the min of two submodular functions is again submodular as long as f minus g uh, is, um, is monotone. So if f and g are submodular, and if f minus g is linear, I'm sorry, if f minus g is monotone, then it's possible to show that the minimum of f and g is again submodular. So these will be uh, these will be useful for us uh, in, in 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 subsequent uh, in subsequent lectures. So let's give a few examples. Uh, we've already explored submodularity when we were talking about matroids and rank functions. So you know, the very first example that doesn't need much more discussion is uh, rank functions. Of matroids. In fact, we've seen that um, uh, rank functions are examples of monotone um, of monotone submodular functions whose uh, marginal values are either zero or one. In fact, that is uh, that is that is characterizing of, of a rank function of a matroid, and we proved that in some of our previous lectures on uh, on matroids. So here's a, a different example, capacity of cuts on a directed graph. So let's let D be a directed graph on vertices V and directed edges or arcs A. And let's let uh, C denote a capacity function. You can think of it as a weight function, but I'm, I'm calling this a capacity of a cut. So let's call this a it's a capacity function. It maps uh, it maps arcs to real numbers, or really, I guess I should probably say, uh, rationals. Um, so this is a capacity function. And now let's uh, let's fix two special nodes, R and S of V. Then I'll define my submodular function as follows: for any subset S of V, but excluding the special uh, nodes R and S, my set function is F of S is defined as the capacity of the cut delta plus of S and R. And you can check, I'll, all of these you should, you should check, uh, that F is indeed submodular. Another example 
is uh, the number of neighbors. in a bipartite graph. So let's let G be uh, some bipartite graph, V and E. V is equal to V1 union V2, and E is uh, uh, goes from V1 to V2, uh, not directed. Um, so this is a bipartite graph. And for any subset U of V, let's... Uh, Let's let um, gamma of u denote the neighbors. Gamma of u is equal to the neighbors of the set u, and therefore cardinality of gamma of u is the number of neighbors. Then you can again check, I'll write this as an exercise, that f of u is equal to the cardinality of gamma of u is indeed submodular. And finally, uh, we'll conclude this lecture with another example that's again, should be very familiar to us from previous lectures. Uh, and this has to do with matroid intersection. Um, we might call this the mixed rank of two matroids. So we spent a number of lectures developing results on matroid intersection. If M1, is a matroid and M2 is a matroid and these have a common ground set E, then the function F of S, which is equal to the rank in matroid one of S plus the rank in matroid two of the complement of S, E minus S, is submodular. Now this gives us an indication that um, that uh, submodular functions are are, are definitely non-trivial. Now, for rank function of a matroid, we studied the problem of maximum size independent set, and we saw that the greedy algorithm is is optimal there. On the other hand, we also studied the problem of the maximum common independent set, and we saw that here things are uh, are, are are less obvious. Um, so immediately this. Now this, this last example should, should suggest that. Um, and you'll remember from our, our, our earlier lectures on matroid intersection, we proved the matroid intersection theorem, which says that the minimum of f of s over all subsets of the ground set is in fact equal to the maximum cardinality common independent set. So it's equal to the maximum cardinality of i where i belongs to both the independent sets of matroid 1 and matroid 2. In the next lecture, we are going to spend time talking about the greedy algorithm for the submodular uh, for submodular function maximization, and uh, and we'll prove some guarantees for this. So we're going to pick that up in the next lecture.